Hello, this lesson is aimed at GCSE art students to help them with their experiment pages. When you're at the stage, when you've got your own images that you are going to work from, you know what style you're going to work from, but you need to test it and show that you're testing it in your sketchbook. So this lesson specifically is watercolour skies. The learning objective is to understand how to manipulate watercolour effectively and be able to create a range of sky effects using watercolour. So I'm going to show you a range of different sky effects. The first one, really, really easy. I'm going to use quite a big, soft brush. I'm just going to cover the section in water. You can see that I've divided my page up using mask and tape. That's just going to mean that I have a really, really neat edge, meaning my page is presented nicely. And obviously, I've done a nice title, as you can see as well. So I've covered it in water. This is called wet on wet, because you're using wet paint on a wet surface. So this, this technique is called wet on wet and you'll see what it does. So you don't have a lot of control over wet on wet and that is one of the benefits of it. It naturally gives you that organic sky effect and water effect. So you can see a really, really watery colour and to start with I'm just going to put down some of that colour a little bit more. I'm just going to put it down. I'm going to leave some areas white because that would give the illusion of clouds but just putting down that colour. Okay, you can see how wet the page is. And you need to look at your image, where is it a bit darker? So mine's darker as it comes down here. It's almost suggesting that the sky, the sun, sorry, is in the top corner. So I want it to be lighter in the top corner and to go down darker and darker. What you can do is take some water off. And it just means you have a little bit more control. It depends how much you want it blurred. Naturally, it will fade in. So just creating that effect of a sky. And then I'm going to build it up so it gets darker and darker as it goes in this corner. So it's going to layer. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush and I'm going to work in lines because skies you will find tend to have horizontal lines, even clouds form horizontal lines. So I've still left some white areas white, but I've built up slightly more dark here, and then I'm going to build up more dark and more dark as it comes towards this corner. So I'm using different blues, and I'm using black as well, because I want that almost stormy effect. So I want it quite grey, that's why I'm using black. Mixing it in with different blues in my palette. This, that's a bit of black and the thicker consistency the darker it will be so i'm going to build it up again but quite lightly flipping it round in horizontal lines some can go through the lighter areas really light lines taking some through but i still want the white in this corner to show through and again making it darker and darker as I come towards this corner. It's about layering. So I'll let that section dry and then I'll build some more detail on it. So that's a base layer and I'll build up some more detail. I'll just let it dry first. Okay, so it's mostly dry now and I can start to build up a few more layers. So again, I'm going to put some different blues in. It would be quite a boring sky if it had all one colour and it wouldn't be really effective, really. It wouldn't be realistic either. Lots of different colours. So I'm putting a dark, maybe a bit more of a purpley, it's a bit of red in there, blue now. And then I'm just going to, again, really, really lightly with my brush, not pushing too hard. And then because it's drier now on the surface, some of these lines are going to stay. Where, as before, they just blurred into the rest of the background. So I'm putting some of these lines in really, really lightly with my brush. Trying to make it darker in this corner and lighter up here. Still running some really delicate lines through up here. And you can wash your brush, dry your brush, and put some more water in to just blur out some areas as and where you want to. 
I'm just going to go over with my brush with not anything on, just a little bit of water, and then just tone it all down. So I'm going to make it really, really dark in this corner now, and then I'll be done, and then I'll have that contrast between the light up here and the dark down here. So I'm going to go in with the black and the blue. It's really, really dark. Some little dark patches around. Keep looking at your reference images. Where is it dark? Where is it light? And exaggerate that. Some more blues, and I'm just going to run, finish it off, some more lines coming over, horizontal lines. So it's a series of layers to create that stormy sky effect. Okay, so I'm going to move on now to a sunset effect. So again, just going to wash my brush and create that water background so it's still the wet on wet effect. And I'm just going to put down a wash. So a wash is when you have a background colour so I can see that my sunset is still kind of blue here in the top corner. So wash should be really, really pale. So it's a base layer. I'll show you what colours I'm using. And then I'm going to use some oranges coming in here, just as a base layer. And then I'm going to need to let that dry more pinky colours up here before I add any detail so I'll just let that dry first. Okay so when it's mostly dry you can then start to add some more of your detailed lines so the key is to exaggerate. I'm looking at where my sky is really orange and I'm just going to drag those horizontal lines across it really bright orange actually when you want it bright go straight in to your palette so it's really bright really little lines up here patches in here horizontal lines and it's still a little bit damp so you can see the paint is blurring slightly still into the background beautiful sunset has more colors so the more colors you use more interesting it's going to be so i'm going to use a red now just to exaggerate some of those oranges and then the oranges. I'm going straight in my palette that time, building up the horizontal lines. Up in the corner is a bit more purpley. I'm just going to mix a little bit of blue with the red here. Put some purpley tones up here, going over the blue a bit. Maybe a bit more red up here. So layering over the top of your wash with some horizontal lines, some yellow, to clean my yellow a bit because it's a little bit murky, and then putting the yellow. I'm using quite a lot more yellow because the yellow is the weakest colour, so you do need to use quite a lot in order for it to stand out. And just going over it all so it blends in. Then I'm going to wash my brush, damp my brush, Dab it on kitchen towel and then I've got a damp brush and I can just go over it really, really lightly. Don't push too hard and it's just blending it all together. And then that's created your second layer. And then you'll let that dry and then build up some more crisp, neat, intricate lines over the top of your the sunset. So just let it dry to start with. Okay, so now it's pretty much dry. I'm going to go over with a smaller brush and get some more obvious, bold, horizontal lines in there. And I'm going to make them really, really bright. So I'm just mixing a really, really bright orange to start with. And I'm just going to drag my brush 
fade away when the horizontal lines continue to keep looking at your reference images and the idea is that you're exaggerating everything you see so where you've got a little bit of a horizontal line make it really 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 stand out because that's going to make your painting more interesting your your painting should be more interesting more vibrant more contrasting than the image and you can edit your image to do that yourself if you enhance the saturation and then it will do it for you and then it's easier sometimes to see where the colours are more vibrant. So see I'm just putting those horizontal lines in, some really delicate ones, depends how detailed you want it. The really, really delicate ones, and then we can put some more red into it. And again, the more colours you put in, the more interesting it's gonna be. So lots of red down here to exaggerate that. A little bit more purple down here. I'm just going to build up some more horizontal lines where I can see them on my image and then I'm going to blend them in a little bit and then it will be finished. Okay, so I made sure that I put a lot of yellow, really, really bright yellow, where the sun is. And then I'm just going to use a bigger brush, a little bit of water, too, not too much, and blend in where it looks too like an obvious paint line. Some of the little delicate ones I want to keep where it looks too, you know, I've just done a line of paint across my page, then just blend it in slightly. Shouldn't really need much water at all in your brush. So I'm trying to keep some of the lines quite harsh and quite obvious, and then blend some out. Okay, so I'm going to have that as the sunset. And now I'm going to work on clouds. Okay, so clouds. I do think it's the hardest sky effect. There's a lot more detail and you have to get it more accurate in order for it to look 3D. The clouds want to look like they are rounded. Um, so the first thing you do is ignore that the clouds are actually there, which I know sounds strange, but we just want to focus on the blue bit. So at the minute, just think of the clouds as blank shapes and you are drawing around those shapes, drawing the blue bits. So ignore the clouds, draw the blue bits. I want to say draw with the tip of your paintbrush. So I'm going to use a small brush and I'm just drawing, looking at my image, around the clouds. But just focusing on the actual blue, ignoring anything, any detail inside the clouds. It's helping my brain to focus on the actual sky and the shapes of the clouds rather than what's in them. So there's a blue bit here, so I'm drawing the blue shape. It's a little bit of a darker blue, so I've used a little bit of black into that mix. That comes out here a little bit. And then there's another blue section that comes up under that blue one, but there's a tiny little white gap between these two blue sections really really important that you look out for those little white areas so again i'm ignoring the clouds and i've just done the blue areas and then i'm going to blend into the blue areas so i don't want to see where my outlines are so i'm blending into them and i'm going to firstly put the paint around the lines on the inside of the lines where your sky is again forgetting anything about clouds clouds don't exist at this minute we're just looking at the blue of the sky you could really really take your time to get every tiny little intricate bump and shape it depends how realistic you want it for the sake of this experimental style i'm not doing it too careful but you could look at every tiny little lump and bump in the shape of that so i've just put some color around the outside and then i'm pretty much just going to use water just to blur that out because then i've got the effect that it's darker up to the outline i don't want to see the out outline i want it to blend into the color but you see how it's fading from light to dark so i'm going to do that everywhere inside my sky shapes so i've forgotten about the cloud shapes i'm just doing inside the cloud shapes the sky shapes sorry inside the blue sky shapes okay so i'm just going to do the last blue that's quite dark blue on my one shape 
really, really important when you're doing this is that the edge is really, really neat. I don't know if you noticed, but I did not put water on my page to start with like I did with the other skies. The reason I've done that is because I want these lines to be neat because if I put water on, they would just blur into the rest of the paper like the other skies did, where this one, I want them to remain neat. So I'm actually really taking my time to just get them as neat as possible. As I said, you can add as much detail as you want looking at every single shape and lump and bump of the cloud like this, getting all of those details. It depends how detailed you want it. But what you do want for sure is the effect that the outline of these blue areas are darker than the middle. So I'm doing the outline first, I'm putting some paint around the outline and then I'm blending in and then I'm getting a darker outline effect. So then you have to move on to the cloud. So important that you're leaving the white areas white with the cloud because that's where the um, light is coming through and it just won't look 3D without that. So you, you can add a little bit more blue to your skies and doing where it looks a little bit more dark and a little bit more light, as much detail as you want is really up to you. With the clouds, my clouds are a lot more gray. So I need to wipe that down to give myself a more area different area, a lot more grey, but even a little bit yellow in, in areas. So they are a different colour, still a little bit of blue in there, but they're more of a murky colour. Start with light and build it up to dark. So find out where you've got dark areas in the clouds. So it's quite dark here. Need a little bit more blue into there, so a little bit green. And I'm trying to find and then exaggerate a bit more black into there to make a bit more grey. Now working in circles now with not a lot of water on my brush. I'm working in a circular fashion rather than horizontal lines. And I'm being really careful to constantly look at my image. Where is there white? So here on the tip of this cloud, there's tiny bits of white. So I'm going to try to leave that white paper to come through. So it's quite dark down here. And it's going quite patchy, and that's what you want it to do. So this area of the cloud is a little bit more bluey, so put more blue into it. So it's quite dark. There's a lot of white areas here. So if you see how I'm painting around where I can see white areas in the clouds. <coughs> so here, for example, there's a white line still on my image so I'm just going to draw around that so I know that I'm going to leave that white and then build up the paint around it and leave that bit white so 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 important because that's all your light coming through quite a lot of light here you see it's starting to build up that cloud effect because I'm working in that circular style with quite a big brush <clears throat> it's not white down here but there's not a lot of details I'm just going over it and then I'm going in that colour again it's a little bit more bluey over here so put a bit more blue into it but still in that circular style there's a white line that runs through here there's a little bit of light at the top of that cloud so I'm going to really try hard to leave those white areas white and the reason why I say try hard is it's quite tempting to just wash all over it with your colour but you want to really try and leave those areas white because that's the actual light coming through. And if you don't have light in your sky, it just really isn't going to work. You won't have any atmosphere. I'm trying to put a bit more blue. So there are different colours in it. I don't know if you notice if I took too much paint on my page, then I'll just dab, dab it on the paper towel to get a little bit off. It's not the end of the world with watercolour. I think this cloud looks too dark, so not the cloud, that's the sky area. So I'm just going to put some water on my brush and go over it. It'll just lift that a little bit. I need to put the paper towel in, it'll just lighten it. I'm just rubbing some paint out a little bit. And then you can look at any details, so there's more blue areas here. And just layer it over the top, but still in that circular style so there's some dark areas now over the top so I've started with the light areas 
and I'm looking for where there's some really dark areas. Sometimes there's not a white bit between the sky and the clouds, so I'm just going to rub those bit out. Sometimes the blue seems to blend into the clouds, the blue of the sky, and sometimes there is a little white bit. So sometimes I'm just going to blur it together, putting some more blue into the clouds, and sometimes I'm going to leave it. <coughs> Most important thing is that you're looking at your image. So this needs some more grey tones in it. And you can work into it really as much as you want. This should be blurred, not an outline, but I'll put my outlines in first so I know where they are. Too much white here. It's much easier to leave a lot of white to start with and then go and hide it all, cover it all. But you can't get your white back once you've gone over it. So this dark bit of sky is almost leaking into the clouds in my image. But those white bits now are really starting to shine. And then it depends how much how much detail you want. You could really add tiny little bits of outline and lines as you can see in the clouds, little little bits of detail with a darker colour. Just can blur it out. It's really up to you how far you go with it. Use quite a lot of water just to blur my little areas that are too white, and again, much easier to leave it white to start with. Black should trickle down here a little bit more, and it depends how abstracted you want it. Sky, I quite like it when it looks almost abstract, but if you wanted it really, really, really detailed, what you would do is let this dry and then go back over with a small brush and lots of detail and add everything in that you can find. Okay, it's gonna add a little bit of dark area there and then I'm going to finish with it. And what I'm gonna do now is add some white to all of my sky paintings. So I'm gonna go back to the first one. I've got a blob of white paint and a ruler and this is all in the efforts of being experimental or want you to be really experimental in your sketchbooks and just a ruler and I'm going to add some white reflections where it's really really white in my sky so in my sky the white's here this is the first one so I'm going to dip it in and drag some white lines into there you could use oil paint you can use acrylic paint for this I'm actually using household emulsion because that's all I have and I'm trying to just add those flecks of white I'm still doing it in horizontal lines. It's where the light just seeps through. It's almost a palette knife effect. Seeps through the clouds. I'm trying to do less and less as it's here and more here. And that's almost created. Sometimes I'm getting down. The effect of the sun being in this corner here, just added more light reflections to the sky. With the sunset, my light is around the sun, so I need to add some white areas here. Try to get them in horizontal lines again. Let me just exaggerate the fact that the sun is really, really bright and vibrant. Quite a lot there. I should know quite a lot and then just drag it out with my ruler. So it's just almost exaggerated that that's where the sun is because there's light. The idea is that you're showing in your sketchbook where you've tested different media. So this would be mixed media because I'm using two different types. Little bits of light reflections here. The sun here, that. All right, so that's created more of a sunset effect because I've exaggerated the light there. 
you could do that with your clouds as well just where there's little bits i'm going to use the corner of white coming through in the sky up to you how far you go with it but using a solid white paint like acrylic or oil or even white emulsion on watercolour it's going to really really stand out compared to the watercolour so just create little areas of white so what I'm going to do now is just peel off my mask and tape and then it will be ready for my annotations okay so I've taken my mask and tape off and you see you're left with a really really neat line so the skies are the really dark stormy sky with the exaggerated white the sunset again with the white around the sun and the cloudy sky what I've noticed about the cloudy sky is once it's dry if you want to make those clouds a bit more 3D, a little trick is just to go into your palette where you've got some murky colour left, put on a, put it on a little bit, put a little bit on a brush, a little brush. And if I add some paint around where I've left those bits of page white, what it does is it's, it exaggerates the white because if it's darker where the white is next to the dark, it's dark next to the white the white's going to look brighter so here for example I'm just going to go around with murky color on my brush and go on the edges just to make those white bits stand out I noticed on my image where I've got those bits of white coming through the clouds are actually darker and then I'll just go into the rest of it and it's just exaggerated those white bits a little bit so they look even brighter and I've made them a little bit more intricate and it's up to you how detailed and neat and refined you wanted it. If you wanted it really, really, really realistic, you would really go in with a tiny, tiny little brush and get those perfect little outlines and shapes and really build it up and spend time on that and look at every single dark bit, every single light bit. It depends how detailed you want it. Okay, those are the three experimental skies with watercolour and white emulsion paint. Thank you.